globe trotting. This is your review for two. Good day, my name is Joe. Today I'll be going over globe trotting and how it plays with two players. Now, globe trotting is a one to four player game where you'll be planning three trips a, a spring trip, a summer trip, and a fall trip by choosing these, these destination cards and actually drawing your your trip on this globe, all while trying to complete these global objectives and objectives on your bucket list and spend the least amount of money. And by the end of the game, after uh, nine uh, destination cards are, are gone to, whoever has the most points wins the game. So let's see a little bit more how to play. So in globe trotting, globe trotting is essentially a flip and right where you start with three uh, places around the globe that you're gonna start your spring, your summer, and your fall trip. And you'll actually write that on the globe with a wet erase marker. So that is kind of neat. You know, it kind of sits in here, um, you start your trip, and then you're gonna get three cards uh, face up. Uh, new cards, these are gonna be destination cards, and you choose one of them to add to your trip. So if you wanna choose, um, you know, Tobago for your summer trip. You'd find where your summer trip starts. You line up, uh, you just line it up on the side of the globe here and you're just gonna wet erase, draw a line to that. And however far that line is, is how much money it's gonna take you and you put on your passport to spend. So it's really basically you have three options and three different trips uh, to add on to. So in total, you have nine kind of kind of options that you play. Some of the ways to score points are our festivals. So if you choose uh, this first column to add to your spring trip, you'll get one. This middle column to add to uh, your summer trip. And the last column, if you add it to your fall trip, you'll get another victory point at the end. Uh, there's gonna be these global objectives you're trying to complete. The first one to complete, it's gonna get uh, more points than anyone else. And you're gonna have your three bucket lists. Now your bucket lists do uh, correspond to the different trips that you're gonna take. And that's essentially the game. You're gonna play over uh, nine, nine turns, if you will. So each turn you're gonna have nine options. So um, like I said, it's gonna be flip three new options, decide which one you're gonna go to and where you're gonna add it to your trip, draw your line, Put your money down and hopefully after uh you know nine turns you've had a nice successful year of globe trotting so let's see a little bit more what i thought about the game so the components in this game i will say this is going to be a head turner uh, when you see a globe like this it's really neat uh wet erase marker uh being able to you know draw on it i had a little bit of trouble the wet erase marker on the passports um and some of the other some of the other cards, everything can kind of be marked on, really, except for the destination cards. And it's it's very neat. I, I really like the you know the components of this game. The box is is pretty large for what it is, and that's kind of a unfortunately kind of a negative for for the game. The rules very straightforward, you know including the solo rules there's 11 pages uh, and the first couple are you know how to put together the globe itself uh, you don't really need references because this game is is fairly straightforward uh flip and right let's talk about setup unfortunately the setup of the globe <laughs> took me probably longer than it than it should have uh, it may have taken longer for me to put together two globes than it did to play the game um, However, the globes look look really awesome once again. Uh, the setup, setup is super straightforward. You shuffle some cards, you get one of each bucket list, uh, get a wet erase, two global you know, objectives, and you're ready to go. So setup, super breeze. Um, as far as table size goes, this can definitely be played on a three by three. We sprawled out a little bit, but the components can definitely be condensed. So let's talk about the gameplay itself. Now, as I said, it's a it's going to be a flip and right. You're going to get the three cards in front of you, uh, three destination cards, and you really choose one to add to a trip. Now, it's kind of beneficial if you choose the one that kind of lines up 
like if you choose this first one, I'm not gonna say, say this one, but say you go to Istanbul in the spring and you're gonna get an extra point on your, on your festival um, card. So you can do, you can score six points that way. So the first couple turns, uh, my wife and I actually chose the same destinations on the same trips. So our globes look fairly similar. Now it's gonna set things apart is gonna be your actual personal bucket list. So these are gonna how you're gonna score uh, different points. Now, my bucket list items, I had like a, a one pointer, a three pointer, and a four pointer. The one pointer I could score multiple, um, but really I, get, I scored maybe 10, 11 points from those where m my wife drew her bucket list and hers were a five, five, and a four. So uh, points at the end of the game. So there was a little bit disparity there as far as if you just don't get high point bucket list items, hopefully you can score maximum points elsewhere. If you spend less uh, money than the opponent, uh, you get two points. So in a two player game, you can only score a maximum of two points due to uh, money constraints. Um, so that's one way. The other way is try to be the first person to complete these global events. And then, you know, the festivals. Other than that, there's just not a ton of other ways to score. So the gameplay itself, really, you have to enjoy seeing the cards, seeing the, the artwork on these cards, being able to draw the line, um, you know, the actual writing part of the roll and write or the flip and write. Because the the game itself doesn't have a lot of substance. There's a total of you know 81 choices in the in the game where uh, you have three cards flipped up. There's three trips, so you have nine choices. We well, make nine choices nine times. So there's a total of you know 81 possibilities of 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 going out here. So. <sighs> The, the gameplay itself is a little bit thin to me. However, I think this can be a very good gateway game to flip and rights and can be a very fun game for four people because it's not going to take a whole bunch of, of extra time. Um, you're going to see the cards. Everybody's going to choose the same time. You can even choose the same cards as anyone else. And you're just going to, you know, practice on your own globe, add to your own trips. So I, I do think with m more people as an intro game, this could be good. However, for me, it was, it was probably a little bit light. So is this game good for two? And I, it, it plays fine with two. Um, like I said, the only thing, with two though is you're going to score two points maximum if you spend less money uh, on your passport than the opponent where in the full game you get two points per person you spend less money than so you can score a maximum of six points in a four player game with two it plays fine it's just like i said it's neat it really is a novelty uh kind of game but for me in my wife, the gameplay isn't quite there for the, the the thick gamer. This isn't, I don't think this is made for people who want a, a deeper theme in the games. Now, I don't know how I'm going to repack this um, in the box, especially for two. So I don't even know how long it'll take, you know, to put up and to get back to the table because I don't know if there's enough space for these two balls because there's still um, four hemispheres kind of in the box left. So it just didn't quite keep our engagement long enough. We enjoyed looking at the pictures. We enjoyed the bucket list. You know, the artwork for this game is neat. Drawing the lines is neat. There's a lot of good things about this game, but the gameplay itself, the actual thought in the game is a little bit more thin than I would like. Now, I'm not saying it's a it's a bad game. It's just a game we it'll probably be tough for us to want to get out to the table if we were looking for a flip and right. We'd probably look for a welcome to, um, you know, series. We'd probably bust out our welcome to the moon and play a few scenarios of that. So, um, simple flip and right to get to the table. 
good for two, probably better at four for that camaraderie, you know, kind of beer and pretzels game type. Um, may not stay in our collection forever. So it, it's a good game, but just not for us. So hope you guys enjoyed the review and until next time.